Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, this is another kind of long video. Uh, this is another guide video. So, last time I made a gemming guide for basically every single type of monster in the game, how you should gem them. This is kind of a continuation on that guide, and this is like the advanced version. Um, it doesn't actually have much to do with, you know, how should I gem certain monsters. It ha actually has to do more with um, what gems I should keep, because there's... I think at this point you probably should know how to gem up most of your monsters, or all of your monsters, um, and you have a pretty good idea, like, if you've been playing the game for a while, you have the, you probably already have the ability to, like, you know, theory craft and know how mechanics work, um, and you don't really have to follow a set guide, and this is mostly for those types of players um, that are mainly, at the very least, farming B7 and up. And not just farming B7 up, but like, you know, like hardcore grinding um, those dungeons, like B7 up, like farming gems, farm, farming astro gems, you know, those those types of players. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I have 5 million gold over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be upgrading, uh, I'm not going to spend all my 5 million gold, I don't think I can really afford to do that, but I'm going to be um, just upgrading, upgrading some gems. And it's not going to be like when I actually upgrade gems like in my, my daily videos because most of those gems are already um, filtered out. And this is like the unfiltered version of that. And I'm going to be showing you guys the kind of the behind the scenes of um, how I decide to keep certain gems, which gems I should use. Recently, uh, if you noticed, in a lot of my videos, when I, whenever I'm gemming a monster up or something like that, you'll see me use gems that are already like at plus 3 or plus 6. The main reason for that is because most of my gems, um, you know, most of the gems that come, come with a 2 substat or 3 substat, then I would have to power up at least to plus 3 or plus 6 to, in order to unlock the other 2 substats to see if that gem has potential. I really only will take a gem to plus 12 at this point. I did before, like earlier on, um, when I didn't have much of a choice, I still, I had still had to work with gems that I'm not entirely happy with. Um, but now I can basically be a little bit more more strict on my gem farming, and I can, um, you know, just sell whatever gems that I really don't feel like using, even if they are the right stat with the right main main um, main stat. As long as they don't have the right substats, I at this point don't need to use those gems. So, um, whenever I'm going through my gems, if you if you see me like. Uh, you know, some, get some new gems that aren't locked. Usually the gems that aren't locked are the new gems. Whenever I finish farming golems and stuff, I would come back and I would sell all the 5 stars, I would sell, you know, all the 4 stars, 5 stars, and I would sell um, all the flat stats, I would sell all the recovery and resist um, from my gems. And basically keep the rest. Like that's just a rough, rough filter. Like that's the first level of filter that I do um, on my gems. And you'll see me, um, you know, be a little bit more biased on certain sets. Like I might like using Ruin, Intuition, um, Life more than any other set. You know, mainly because I mostly run like aggressors. I like building light and dark monsters. So, you know, like crit damage, crit rate, that definitely does have a huge, huge effect on me. Um, and Conviction as well. Conviction is really, really good for resist. So you'll see me a little bit more biased. Um, I'm gonna have to give a little bit of a disclaimer here. There is no right or wrong answer at this point. Like early game, there is a there's an easy way to figure out what is what is the most effective way for you to progress. At this point of the game, there is no right or wrong answer. There is only your your preference and your own personal tolerance on your gens. Um, I use the word tolerance because I think it's a pretty good word to describe the situation. Um, when you're when you just finish um, your B7 team and you unlock B7, you started farming B7, you're, you, all of a sudden you had the access, you had access to um, 5 star, 6 star diamond slot gems. The, the types of gems that you'll be using at that point um, will be just you know ra random 5 star, 6 star gems that have the right main stat that you want. You won't care too much about the substats. Um, if you can, if possible, you might try to put a set together and and do that. But, um, you know, your tolerance should be pretty... I think uh, your tolerance, um, I would say, is pretty high at that point. 
because uh, you don't have much access to whatever gems you want. Um, you know, in the ideal situation, you would have the perfect six-star gem with the right set, with the right main stat, with every single substat that you want, and every single roll rolling into the substat that you like. That is the most ideal, and every single roll being the perfect highest roll possible. Um, you know, that would be the ideal situation. But a gem like that, I don't think statistically probably sh does exist. Maybe like one in one billion or something like that out of one billion gems that every single Monster Super League player has been farming since the beginning of time. Um, there might exist one or two gems that are actually like that. But most of the time, um, your gems are imperfect. If you go through a lot of your gems, they're not, they're they're not something you um, you you're entirely happy with. Um, a lot of times they have flat stats, a lot of times they have rolls that go into stats that you don't want them to roll into. Um, a lot of times they only come with two substats when they spawn, so you have to use your plus six and plus three to gain two more substats, and you lose potential for that gem to become even stronger. Um, but you then you still have to settle um, with using that gem, because it's the only thing that you're able to use, the only thing that you have access to. So I use tolerance because your tolerance, um, the less options that you have, the higher your tolerance is. But the more options that you have, the lower your tolerance will be for your gems because you have access to better gems. So, you know, if you if you have a gem that doesn't have the right substats, for example, um, when you're when you're at the point you just finished your B7, B8, B9 team, you have access to every single you know type of gem. You just had access to every single type of gem. You would um, you know, maybe try to have all the main stats and then you put a Valor set together. But that Valor set doesn't really need to have all the right substats. As long as it has all the right main stats, you'll be pretty happy because, um, you know, your tolerance isn't that high. But as you get more and more attack gems, more and more crit rate gems, you'll, you'll start to, your tolerance will start to get lower and lower because you, uh, you have more access, you have more things to choose from. And you would only keep the attack gems, for example, that have crit rate, um, or attack gems that have, uh, you know, crit damage gems that have attack and crit rate, uh, and you would not keep anything else. And um, so a lot of this is personal. A lot of this has really has to do with the 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 types of gems that you're willing to keep and willing to use. Also, I'm very biased. Um, I noticed that I'm very biased because I also watch a lot of people stream. And um, a lot of really just high-level high, high level players, I do see um, streams, YouTubes and stuff. I see their boxes and what they use. And I've noticed that I'm actually really, really biased. I think it's part of my, <laughs> it's part of my OCD. Um, I really, really do not like using the flat sets. Um, I like to complete a set on most of my monsters. I, I would prefer to have a set on most of my monsters. And I don't think this is exactly right, because it's very, very possible, math mathematically, it's very, very possible for you to get a monster uh, with all the right stats and get probably better s stats than if you gemmed a monster with a actual set. Um, if you think of it like this, the Valor set gives 20% extra attack. If you can gem a monster up with substats that are on all your gems that would um, be higher than than the extra 20 attack that Valor gives while keeping the, the all the other substats that it gives, then it's more ideal for you to use a broken set rather than using this Valor set because um, well because most of the time you you just get you, you would get more out of it actually no no if if it's completely even then it's 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 even it doesn't matter which one you use but if um, in most cases you will have better substats if you don't. Um, limit yourself to one one set um, versus you know limiting limiting yourself to one set in order to complete the set in order to get the bonus. Um, you know as long as you can get more stats than the than the actual stat that it gives, then it doesn't really matter. You know. So um, I'm a little bit biased. If you look through my gems, I don't have a lot of these types of gems. I only keep the most, like the the, the most perfect of perfect gems, um, if they are, if they are like, um, 
if they're, they're the sets that don't make an actual set. You know, I really only keep the best of the best, and I, I basically sell everything else. Um, this one I kept for like the 20% crit rate. It's hard to get an attack gym like that as well. Um, oh wait, no, that's not even a that's not even a set. That's actually a protection set. This one I, I use for the crit rate, crit damage attack. You know, I basically all if you see me use one of these like um, non-set gems, like flat set gems, they are like they usually have really really good sub stats because I, I would not keep them otherwise and that is actually wrong you should not do that so do as I say um, don't wait yeah do, do no don't do what I do do as I say yes no, do as I say not what I do yes that's I think that's the same um, so yeah, there's there's that as well. So you just wanna you wanna keep that in mind, always in the back of your mind when you're powering up gens. Um, I'm trying to, you know, try to trying to erase my bias as well, but it's it's really really hard. Um, I just I don't like doing it. I like to I like to have a full set, and if I can't, then I try to make it happen as best as best I can. Um, but it's probably not right. You really should try to. Um, most of the time, you should try to uh, do what you can, even if you have to use a broken set. You'll see a lot of really, really high players, even higher than me, use a lot of broken sets, mainly just because they, um, you know, they can get better substats that way. So, um, yes, th there's that. Uh, the other thing is, I. I I think I should uh, probably get into powering up in order to explain some of these con concepts. So I'm gonna pick a few gems and actually go go through and and actually power them up. Now this is a gem of life attack. Um, it has two flat stats, which means in most cases this probably won't be that good. Um, plus it's a gem of life, meaning that you can only do this on a like on a um, if you. This gem would only be really good if you're actually using an actual gem of life. But gem of life is actually really, really good. I do like this set because it gives bonus HP, and you can use this on any bruiser type monsters that you want to use for um, for anything really, like that need to take tank a little bit of damage and as well as well as do damage. So anything that you would build with a hybrid of attack and HP or defense, um, these types of gems are still somewhat worth it. What I like to do is I usually like to take this to plus three, at the very very least. If it spawns a if it spawns a flat stat right now, then I will just sell it. If it spawns like a percent recovery as well, I would still sell it. Like uh, as long as it doesn't. If it gives me like crit rate or crit damage, I would probably keep. Now give me six percent defense. Um, this made me somewhat hopeful. If it spawns like a a, a percent um, HP or percent crit rate, then this gem would be worth selling. If it gives me another flat set, the, st the chances of it going into defense is just too low, and I would just sell this gem because it's, in most cases it would probably turn out really bad. It does have the potential to you know, completely power up the defense, but it's, it's better that I invest my resources, my, um, in this case my gold, in other gems that have higher potential, that have the higher chance to um, turn into something good. So as I predicted, it gave me defense and HP. The HP is kind of a low roll, but now it became a 50-50 chance for this gem to become somewhat good. It's also a gem of life set, so uh, um, attack, defense, HP are the three main stats that I, I do want. Uh, most of these I will be gemming on PV monsters. It doesn't have resist, so you can't really use this gem for PvP um, on, your, on your bruisers anyways. Um, it's not too good. But I would actually still keep this in my inventory just in case I need someday I need to put a whole gem of life set together and make it work out. Now this gem has crit damage, crit rate, it's and it's an attack gem. I already know this is a good gem. I don't need to power it up. I'm just gonna keep it as is. Um, this one has three substats. Thing is, I can power this up to plus plus three. See if it gives me crit rate. If it gives me anything else, I would just sell this gem. All right, gave me eight percent resist, which actually made me somewhat hopeful. But the other three stats are are really really shitty. Um, plus, it's an attack gem, so I would probably sell that gem. 
I would probably just sell this gen. I'm better off invest. Your gold is a finite resource. You don't want to invest it in gems that have um, a low chance to become good. Because it literally has one substat for it to be good. Although, uh, you really have to have to see what other gems you can choose from. Now, the thing is, I have more choices. I have more attack gems I can choose from. There are triangle. I don't need to use that gem. I'm not limited by that. So I know that um, you know even if I don't, I can probably get one better unless I immediately need it. And attack um, gem of lives are a little bit more niche, so I really don't need to need to worry too much about that. Now this one has HP resist attack. Um, this one probably has higher potential to become become something good. If it gives me a flat stat over here, I would still keep it because these two substats are good. This one, I wouldn't be so sure. If it gave me another flat stat, stat I would not be using it because the crit damage um, in this case is a useless stat because I, I'm not using a crit set or anything like that. Um, you know, most in most cases, like um, if you're if I'm using this set, if I'm if I pl one day um, ever use this set. It would either be to, you know, in a full gem of life set, or I would, uh, there's a chance of me using it as a broken set. And there's no reason to use a broken set attack gem that doesn't have any sort of crit rate. Anyways, so the only, the only um, way I keep this gem is if I spawn crit rate on the plus three. Now give me flat attack, making this gem completely useless, and therefore um, I sell. I locked this gem a long time ago because I, I was just too, like I, I just I was just too lazy to um, actually do this because sorting out your gems like this, like what I'm doing right now, actually takes a long, long time. Um, so a lot of case in a lot of cases, um, if you don't, if you really don't feel like um, powering it up. I like crit rate gems. I, I somewhat like think they're a little bit harder to obtain than attack gems, since they they only come from squares. Um, I'll at least take this to plus three. If it gives me shit, I sell it. Oh shit! Give me defense. Damn it! All these gems are like that. Comes with two flat stats. The plus six plus the plus five and plus six gives me like two percent stats that are really good, like HP defense. And then I can't sell it. Game knows exactly what I'm thinking. Sneaky, sneaky bastards. All right, I think I think we're a little bit bored with Gem of Life. I'll move on to like you know intuition or something like that. Um, intuition is a little bit different. I don't think I can explain through every single type of gem, um, but I think you guys get most of it. You guys get my idea like of how how to do this. I think I'll explain conviction, um, intuition, and uh, and ruin. I think those will, those are probably the more important ones. Like Gem of Life Valor protection is very very simple. You use them if you can get, if you, like, there's no reason to use them if you can get um, a broken set with substats higher than whatever they give. But it's much much harder to, um, to get 40% crit damage from subs, and much much harder to um, you know push your resist as high as you need it to. So. Like conviction is really, I'll, I'll, I'll start by explaining conviction first so, so we don't get too sidetracked. Um, conviction gems are are just, I think a tier above um, life, the whatever the hell this is called, protection, life, and valor. Um, the reason for that is I would actually say they're probably like a little bit more um, important than, than intuition and, uh, and ruin. I think they're kind of on par with Ruin, but I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I like to use crit damage, put sets together, and uh, use dark monsters. So, um, but in a lot of cases, Conviction is, like in normal monsters, Conviction probably has the highest value in, in um, a lot of cases, especially in if you're doing PvP and stuff. Um, Conviction gives you resist. As I was explaining before, the, res the soft resist cap is 85, so you definitely want to push um, as close to that as you po possibly can. And the only way to do that, if you don't use a full set, because it caps out really easily at the full set, is to uh, make it through substats. Um, but a lot of times your substats aren't enough, and you have to push it a little bit more um, using the set bonus. 
and this conviction is the only way that you can push that push that extra 20%. So um, it's much much harder to get 20% extra resist in your subs. Like if you lose 20% defense on a tanky monster, but you use three slot defense, it doesn't matter that much. But if you lose 20% um, resist on a monster, like you, none of your sub stats have resist, like you 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 lose a whole 20% um, from using a broken set. But on a monster that actually needs resist then the difference is really, really huge. So Conviction Set is a lot more valuable in that way. Um, now, Conviction, I don't really usually use that much. I think I only have one monster that is set up with a full set of Conviction, and that is my my uh, Light Siren, who's a pretty good healer. Um, her, her resist isn't even all that high either. But she does have like quite a lot of recovery and stuff because she's like a healer, um, and yeah, I just pushed up the recovery a little bit through substats, and I did get manage to get a little bit of uh, well, actually no, I, I don't have much um, much resist. I basically just put the set together because all three of these are defense subs, and she scales really well with defense, so um, so I put these on her. But for conviction gems, what you want to do is you. The, obviously the most valuable of the conviction gems are the ones with resist um, and with crit rate being rare this is probably a really really good gem since it has resist and attack um, but I think other other gems that don't necessarily have um, all the substats that you want are a little bit more valuable as conviction mainly because of the free resist that it gives you because, say for example, you're trying to put, push um, the resist of a monster up to a certain point. You're using two Conviction Gems that have Conviction substats. Maybe it rolled Conviction twice. You have like, maybe 15% substats. That's 30. And then you get 20 from your base. Um, then that equals 50. And you're trying to push that Conviction up a little bit more, closer to 85. Um, the only way to do that is to, to put like a full set together. You know, obviously, if you had another 15 from your, your subs with the Conviction, you can reach 85. But, um, it's still better to use, to, to fill a whole Conviction set rather than, than to use a Broken set. Because your other two gems are, are already Conviction. So, um, unless you have a, a Broken set gem with, uh, with more than 20% resist, um, it's not really worth using it. Versus a gem... That, that is a, on a conviction set without any resist at all because you would still get that 20% um, resist through the set and um, the good thing about act actually doing doing it through the conviction set method is um, your other gem, the one with 20%, you can use that for a different monster that you might be putting on a broken set so um, conviction set even, even conviction gems as long as they're useful uh, like gem slots then, and their other substats aren't too shitty. They're still useful because because of that situation that I basically just described before. Um, but you still want to be a little bit strict on your your conviction gems. So uh, this one, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this. This is a defense conviction gem. Actually, I'm a little bit like it really has to work like this. Um, if you don't have the same shape with the same main stat. If you don't have that, then don't uh, don't sell it. So even if the substats are complete garbage, um, say for example you don't have another defense um, diamond conviction gem, then don't sell it. Keep your conviction gem because there's a there's a chance that you might need in the in the future because you might be, just be missing that extra diamond slot in order to fill your 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 conviction, um, but I, I would only say this for defense, um, defense HP and attack, and crit rate, and nothing else. Yeah, the only other one is crit damage, but then crit damage isn't really all that useful unless it, it comes with a crit substat. So um, unless it's a valor, actually no, even on valor, even on valor, if it has no crit substat, crit damage gems aren't worth using. All crit damages without any uh, crit substat really at this point aren't aren't really worth using. Um, actually, even early on, you're probably most of the time better off with using attack. So crit damage gems without crit substats are basically useless. Um, 
The only reason I think on a conviction set where I would keep a crit damage with without crit rate is if it has high resist. Even if it only has one rule, like like eight percent resist, I still probably wouldn't keep it. Um, all right, let's start with the shittiest of the sh shitty gems. Uh, I I think that was the, that one was it. It was an HP gem with uh with two flat stats, flat stats, and uh and nothing else. And it's the only one I have. So uh. If this was like defense, for example, I'd probably just straight out. I, w I would still take it to plus six, and I would take it to plus three first, see what spawns. Um, if it's nothing good, then I would just straight out sell it. But because this is an HP gem with uh, flat HP or monsters that you want to boost up high HP, but you still need resist with, um, this this would still be a good gem. So it spawn crit damage. Um, if it gives me another useless stat, like for example. Um, I don't know, flat attack or something. Even actual attack. I probably would still sell this. Only if it gives me defense. Um, actually, with defense, I would still sell it. It's, it's actually that, that bad. If it gives me resist or crit rate, then it's, it's somewhat worth using. So it gave me attack. Now, uh, for... For this gen, on Conviction, you definitely do need the resist. So the only reason you would be using this set, it, or on a on a HP monster, um, is, or on a recovery, because HP works for anyone. You can actually use this on a nuker as well. Um, the only reason you would be ever using this set is because is when you have two other Conviction gens that have high resist, and you put them together on a monster, and this is the last gen to fill the third slot because you want that extra 20% um, resist. In most cases, these stats aren't going to be useful. Attack on, um, like, even if you have attack, you still need, like, uh, well, actually, it really depends, because I'm, I'm a little bit biased. I, I think you, normal people can keep this if they use, like, RGB attackers. Um, this can, like, fill one slot, and then it would still boost your attack a little bit. But the flat HP isn't useful in that case, so it wouldn't work. And then on HP aggressors, these these st stats or or um, healers like passive healers, these three stats are useless as well. So in most cases, cases this gem is not going to be usable. Um, so I would definitely sell it. All right. Uh, could do one more conviction gem. Alright, like this one. This one is attack uh, crit rate. It, it's actually really good because it's a crit rate gem crit rate gem that gives attack. If it spawns like another good substat like crit damage or um, or like flat HP, flat de or not flat HP, uh, percent HP, percent defense, this or percent attack. Or not oh no, it already has percent attack. Or, or uh Yeah, crit damage, percent HP, percent defense, then this would still be a really good gem. It, even if I were to use it as a complete broken set, it's just a bonus that it's on conviction. But if it gives me like more flat stats, then it, it all of a sudden becomes useless because the chances of it going into attack is very very low. So it gave me defense, which actually is a really good stat um, on this gen. And we're gonna see what the plus six is. But I think at this point, since it already has attack and it's already a crit rate gen um, and it has defense on the other stat. All right, so this is actually uh, a really really good roll on on these gems. So out of the three substats, um, only one of them is flat, and the other two, other three are all substats that are usable on basically all types of monsters. So definitely do want to want to keep that gem. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's the chances of this gem becoming useful is uh, is very very high. Um, now intuition is uh, I would say mostly used for PVE on dark monsters. And uh, and dark monsters, yes, <laughs> dark monsters and dark monsters. You you really don't need intuition um, in most cases because you can do like one slot crit rate and then boost your crit rate up um, through substats, and you'll have like near 100% crit rate even on dark monsters. 
But uh, the good thing about Intuition is if you can manage to put a full set together, you don't even need any bonus crit rate. So Intuition just makes things a lot easier to gem. You don't need to have really good substats on your Intuition gems. A lot of times, as long as they're the right main stats, you can make that monster somewhat usable. Um, that's why I think um, for Intuition gems, I'm not too strict with them because of how easy they are to use and how... Uh, how easy it is to gem up all monsters with intuition like if you really need the crit rate all you really need to do is have crit rate uh, and two other stats that are the, the stat that you want so for defense aggressors you can do crit rate defense defense and if you can put them on a full intuition set um, without any other crit rate substats that's already 70 wait 70, is it 70 is it 54 on a on a normal 100% crit rate gen. Yeah, 54. So it's already it's already 74% crit rate plus the 10% base. It's already 84% crit rate, making the um, crit damage, for example, a dark monster, really, really good. So if you had a dark sea star, for example, you could put um, a six star um, six star intuition gen, and then like this one's only a five star. I actually even kept it. Like, well, actually, I, I had this a long, long time ago. Um, but I, I kept using this one because it's still better than using another one, um, another broken set or anything like that, because this still gives higher crit rate because of the actual intuition bonus. So if you had a 6 star intuition gem, um, you would already have a base of 84% crit rate without any sort of substats. And even if you don't have any other substats with crit rate, um, that monster already becomes you know relatively, relatively strong and has unlocked most of its potential um, through just using a, a did I mean did I did I say conviction when I meant intuition um, you know all the time before when I said conviction I meant intuition while I was talking about this set um, so you don't need to be too strict on your intuition sets as long as they have the right main stats and uh, if it's a crit rate gem like a 6 star crit rate intuition gem, like that gem is just really really valuable even if that gem has like all the shittiest substats ever. Um, I remember... I remember I bought a gem. Like I actually bought a gem. That was like no main stats or something like that. I think it's my, on my Light Victoria or, or somebody else. I can't remember exactly. Um, but because it was a crit rate, crit rate uh, intuition set, I kept it. Because it doesn't matter who I use that monster on. It doesn't matter what substat spawn, even if it's like all flat stats. It doesn't matter because it's an intuition um, crit rate gem. And that makes it so much more valuable. So uh, intuition is just a way to gem up monsters. I think gem up, especially like gem up like filler monsters that you don't need to have the exact best of the best gems on it's a bonus if you can get really really good gems um, but it's just it's just a pretty good set and um, intuition also has another use if you don't want to gem monster up with crit rate it's actually possible to crit push that monster's crit rate up relatively high through using the intuition set so basically any intuition with crit rate is just extremely valuable um, Again, I'm probably really biased because I, I like use a lot of dark monsters, and I'm like, you know, just my bias is all towards dark monsters. So that's why I highly, highly value um, intuition gems. You should actually val highly value intuition gems because most of the rebirth monsters and monsters from events are also dark. So. Um, the ones that they give you for free, a lot of them are dark monsters. And dark monsters, usually like the rebirth monsters, have really, really easy to get. Like, you know, if they're for rebirth, they already have like free evil three counterparts that you can use to get them to evil three, um, or evil three materials that you can get them to evil three with. So, um, for most people, I think intuition is very, very valuable, even if the substats are complete shit, as long as it's somewhat good the gem is good um, as long as uh, it, it really like substats really don't matter for this this set to be honest like it just as long as all the right it has all the right main stats this is a good good set to use
Um, alright, so... I don't think I really need to power anything up. I probably will just keep everything. Um, <laughs> Ruin, I... I favor this set, but I don't... Uh, not as much as... Not as much as Intuition. Um, because Ruin is only usable if you have high crit rate. What that means is, basically, a Ruin gem most of the time would only be good if it has crit rate on it. I wasn't doing this before, but now I probably should. The other thing is you can actually use Ruin with a lot of light monsters, because um, they do have that 10% extra crit rate. So if you have a... Um, if you have a, a maxed out crit rate gem on a Ruin set and you put it on them, it basically automatically boosts their crit rate up to 70, 74%. And then you need to somehow get that a little bit higher. Um, you know, because 74% is already pretty high. So it definitely does make the crit damage worth it. So like on light monsters, um, for light attackers, like just straight out nukers that you want to use for dungeons, um, Ruin is definitely really, really good. And... But I think right now I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more strict with my Ruin set. I really don't like to use these gems unless they have crit rate. And, uh... Or they have, like, really good rolls in, like, HP or something like that. So I saw, saw a really bad, um, defense Ruin gem, this one. It's the bad gems that you need to get to plus six and test out and see what what substats spawn. All right, this had this gave me defense and attack. Um, now, on monsters that need defense and attack, uh, there are actually a few, basically all hybrids you can use defense and attack with. Now, the only reason I would keep this stat is obviously if it gives me crit then the, the value of this gem auto automatically just like rises by like quite a bunch, quite a, quite a lot. Um, but if it gives me, uh, if it gives me like HP for example, I think it's probably the second best stat in this, that this can roll to, I would, uh, let me think of if I would keep it. Ruin set, but crit rate attack. It actually would still be worth it in terms of value if it rolled a percent HP. Because, um, what type of monster would be using this gem? What type of monster would, be, would you need the defense and attack with? Um, it kind of rules out defense aggressors. Because attack all automatically becomes a useless stat if you're talking about defense aggressors. Um, HP stat is useful on all types of monsters. Um, crit rate is really kind of needed for defense aggressors as well. The other thing is you can use this on healers and tanks, like actual tanks, utility monsters that you don't need to gem up um, with too much damage. But if they're dark monsters, then you would do one slot crit rate. Um, if they're light monsters, you can do one slot crit rate and then use, the, use, use this set to boost up their damage. Um, but then you would still need that crit rate. So the only other... Um, the only op other option is to use this as a, as a broken set. So I'm basically I'm going to try to get to plus 6, but there's only one stat that I really want, as long as it, um, it... Only if it spawns crit rate, because all other stats are completely useless, even if it gives me HP. Because, um, you know, I, as I explained before, I... It already... Like, this stat on a aggressor is useless, so may, this would only be the only useful stat. Um, if I was to use this on a hybrid monster, the crit damage is not all that useful if I can't get the crit rate up. So one of my other gems basically always need to be gemmed with one slot crit rate in order for the Ruin set to take effect. Um, especially without any crit rate subs, because there's really no, like 100% no way that I'm using a Ruin set if, um, you know, if my crit rate isn't, like, at least, at the very, very least, like over 50% or something like that. So, um... You know, that kind of goes out the window. So the only monster that uh, could make use of this stat, this, like these three stats, um, and the crit damage, would be some sort of light utility, um, basically some sort of light utility monster that you would use for PvE. 
and I really don't need that because, well, one, I don't need it for any of my Dragon Giants runs. Um, I could possibly use it on some Dragon runs, um, but the chances of that happening are pretty low, and the crit damage is really, really hard to use unless I can get the crit rate up. So I would really only use it on, um, like, there's just no reason, there's no way I would use this gem on anything. Like, it doesn't, it just, it doesn't, the puzzle piece doesn't fit at all. Like, if you use it for this, this type of monster, the, like, if you use it for aggressors, the attack becomes useless. If you use it for attackers, the, um, you know, the HP becomes a useless stat or something like, like If you use it for an attacker, like, there are better gems to use for attackers. So, basically, this gem is useless, you know, in a sense. Um... So we're going to have to sell it. Um, you know, I could keep going. I can definitely keep going because I have a lot of gems that I need to basically go through that mental process with. But I, I you know, kind of have it down in my head. It's just a little bit harder for me to actually um, have to explain it. But... Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully you guys get the idea. I think the idea is definitely more important. You got to think about what this gem can be used for, and it, it has to do with experience. Like, there's no, there's no easy way to teach you like how to sort out every single one of your gems. You kind of need to go through the the process of, um, you know, what monster could possibly use this gem, and what's the likelihood of it. Um, being a good gem. Like, if I had the perfect roll just now on that on that ruined gem, it wouldn't really matter. Like, I get the perfect roll, I have all defense, all HP. Like, alright, I could I have really, really high defense and HP. Um, if it rolls to HP twice, I get like 20% HP. I could just use a gem of life set and to, to boost that and as as long as I have a main stat defense. And if I'm using that on a healer or something, the attack doesn't really matter all that much. So um, you know, I might even be able to get a resist or um, or or something better on like a gem of life set or on a gem of protection set. So there's no reason for me to ever use that gem. Um, you kind of have to go through that process with every single gem in order to make this work. So that is pretty much it. Um, that is just it for my kind of a guide um, or whatever you want to call it. Just me going through some gems. Um, explaining what to keep and what to sell and this is probably a little bit more advanced you probably don't really need to think all that much about this until you're past the point at, of um, you know at least like hardcore farming b7 and up um, so yeah, that's pretty much it uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video peace out